Ayo, we are back here on the Sports Kingdom. Kevin Walsh, as always. But today, switching it up a bit, I'm bringing on my good friend, Anthony Luzito, to the podcast for the first time. And how we doing? Doing very good here. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, so you guys are going to become more familiar with Ant throughout. He's going to be on a bunch of these with me. Uh, a couple of, the, couple of them I'll, I'll do myself, of course, like I did with the NFL division previews. But right now, we're going to talk about the college football weekend. Week one is in the books. And right off the bat, for me, I, I have to say I am a big fan of college football weekend. We texted each other over the weekend, happy college football weekend. And <laughs> it, it was it was real, it was legit. We had a situation where we had ranked teams actually playing each other in important games. There were four matchups where it was a ranked team versus a ranked team. And there were a bunch of other good matchups that were really important. Tough games for ranked opponents up against teams that were outside of that top 25. Mm-hmm. I, I loved it. I was a big fan. And I think that this needs to continue. I, I think that college football needs to build this tradition, build off this foundation, where every week one is college football weekend, the start of, Labor of the weekend. season. I think it's perfect. I wouldn't be opposed. I, I think, too, um, the, the, the big thing is you look at the slate of games for week two, it's really, really underwhelming. Horrendous. And I think that they can get away with that because... Week one, all about college football. Week two, mm-hmm. nobody's really caring that much about the college football season because, of course, NFL season is kicking off. Mm-hmm. So it's a good strategy. And then we, we get back to week three. There are some big-time games. Again, we have ranked teams playing ranked teams off the top of my head. I think we have Notre Dame, Michigan State, and I think we also have Ohio State, Oklahoma uh, in week three. But we'll, we'll get there when we get there. So obviously a whole whole bunch of things happened within that first week. The AP Top 25 looks way different than it did preseason-wise. Uh, and, and I'm going to start off with saying, are there any problems that you have with the new AP 25? Do you think there's anything that they got wrong, whether it was putting a team too high or putting a team mm-hmm. too low? Um, I start here uh, a few problems. I have a problem with Washington moving up six spots from four. Yeah, they were at 14. They beat up on a god-awful team, which is Rutgers. <laughs> <laughs> like, they are really bad. Um, I just don't think they... I, I don't problem with them really moving up. It's just how much they moved up. I think they should move maybe just a couple spots. I, it wasn't like they had a very impressive win. I mean, that's. I mean, yeah, that that's kind of to me where I I was a little confused. That was my. I, I just went for like from top to bottom. Based that that was my first problem. I have yeah, like a I, couple other ones. Few. I just don't necessarily l- look at it and be like, oh wow, you win forty eight thirteen. That's impressive when. Louisville won seventy to fourteen. Yeah, like Miami won seventy to three. It, it's <laughs> they demolished teams the way they were supposed to, but I don't no, necessarily. They, yeah, they did what they were supposed to do. Exactly. I don't know if fine. it warranted Washington jumping ahead. Like they jumped ahead of Michigan State. They sh- like, I've, and that to me, they I just be ahead of Georgia weird. either. I think you're even. I had. A, they shouldn't be ahead of Georgia or that's even Texas. Honestly, oh no. I guess. Well, I mean, yeah, Texas is new, which is one of the other things that I really wanted to talk about because I was trying to figure out how they were going to do these rankings. Again, college football weekend was very new. This this big week one where all these big time meaningful matchups, it, it was very new. And when Texas beat Notre Dame, I was under the impression that the new AP Top 25 would feature Oklahoma ahead of Texas still. And I and I thought that that would be pretty silly because Texas looked better. Mm-hmm. Texas won and According even to the rankings, Texas beat a better team than the one that Oklahoma lost to, based on how it was. Based because on Oklahoma, yeah, because Houston was at fifteen. Obviously, Notre Dame was at ten, and I was pretty surprised, but very happy to see Texas at eleven and mm-hmm. Oklahoma behind them at fourteen. I think that they got that perfect, I, and that's really for me what I was really happy about. I was really happy to see Tennessee drop down to 17, because again, I was like, well, they won. I mean, how far are they going to really want to move them down? But mm-hmm. they had to go to overtime against Appalachian State, because well, if Tennessee would have won 48-13, similar to that washington Rucker score, they yeah. wouldn't have moved up for it. There would have been no award. So mm-hmm. I'm glad that they were punished for a very, very lackluster Week 1 performance. I agree. I mean, I don't I think still Texas should have been ahead of Wisconsin. 
And that was just because um, we really found out that LSU has a horrible quarterback that they started. They might have a better quarterback behind them, but the, he only he threw for literally zero touchdowns and two interceptions. And it wasn't like Wisconsin wasn't pressing really that much like offensively. They had only one offensive TD, and they shouldn't really thank their kicker because he had three field goals. So it wasn't like they really like went off like 30 to whatever, they 16 or 14, whatever LSU had. I was more very more impressed with Texas because uh, they played a – a true freshman, uh, can't remember. It starts with a B. Buscelli, I believe, yeah. is how it was who, pronounced. Who, who could really throw, like throw the long ball? It was very impressive. Yeah, he was really, really then, good downfield. And then they started the uh, senior QB too, who could run. Like I can't remember the names right now, but it, it was, was. I it thought was, it was more impressive because like when you knew each one was coming out, you knew he, one was going to run, one was going to pass, and Notre Dame really couldn't stop it that well. I mean, it was a shootout, mm-hmm. so Texas wasn't really on defense, and they. Based a Heisman tending, uh, contending quarterback, Kaiser threw, threw five touchdowns and rushed yeah, for one. ran so. for one, too. And, and that's another thing. Wisconsin took a big jump. I was a little taken back to see them at 10. Now, I understand the logic. If you felt like LSU was the fifth best team, they beat the fifth the best team then, and that does move them to 10. My thing, though, is LSU did not look like a top five team in this country, and I don't think that had a lot to do with Wisconsin. Wisconsin played very well. I mean, they st- they, didn't, they stopped Fournette from getting a touchdown, if that matters. But he had 176 <laughs> total yards of offense. He had 176. The team as a whole had 257. Mm-hmm. They only had 81 yards that he wasn't responsible for. And I understand, of course, they're going to lean on Leonard Fournette, but I just feel it, it, it looked like LSU might be in for another underwhelming season because the quarterback position is such a problem. Because Leonard Fournette is... I mean, people are already saying he's a generational talent. He's a guy who should be picked in the top five come come draft time. There are people talking about him uh, very similar to Jadavion Clowney when he was in college of should he be yeah. sitting out this year. Uh, and the defense is loaded with a lot of good players as well. But if this quarterback position cannot improve, mm-hmm. LSU is probably going to fall flat on their face again. And I think that that is – it's pretty sad yeah. because there's a lot of wasted talent mm-hmm. there. And going back to like – Really, uh, Tennessee. I really think they should be ahead of Iowa. I don't think Iowa deserved to even move up a spot. That they're perfect at where they were, because literally they don't. They were literally the only team besides I think Miami really that faced a like that deserved to move up. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Because like Miami, only, they only moved up from unranked to well, yeah, twenty-five. They, they hopped in at twenty-five, and then they have Iowa who's facing literally no one. They move up a spot. I just and. It's, I have a problem with them being in front of Tennessee, because literally, because Tennessee won, mm-hmm. and they did they did still win, and just because Iowa, they literally never uh, schedule anyone, and apparently this committee, the um, what do you call it the, um, the college football yeah, playoff committee. The, I know they don't do the AP, but they said they're gonna come down harsher on scheduling. So oh hopefully well, that, well hopefully, hopefully that's like a more of a future statement I'm making. Yeah, we'll we'll see how that does go. I'm not a, a huge problem with Iowa moving up one because I think that. They they were pretty true to their guns because Iowa. It's not like Iowa was in a close game similar to Tennessee. So all the teams that did kind of handle their business mm-hmm. and win somewhat impressively were able to jump at Tennessee. So I'm not. I'm it's happy like, that there was consistency as as well. I think this was a yeah. lot more fair than kind of what I anticipated. Yeah, I just saying because Tennessee still did win the game. It's not like they mm-hmm. lost and they went down eight spots. So I mean, yeah, they, but I think I, they still should have been ahead like of them maybe in TCU. I mean, they were. They did still win, which, yeah. which counts. <laughs> I mean, TCU went and they played an FCS team in South Dakota State, and I believe they gave up 41 points. I mean, yeah, we're they still 59. They they just went off in the fourth. That yeah, I mean, all they're, they're still this is still another TCU team. There's going to be tons of problems on defense, tons of points given up. But I want to pick 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 one group, pick one team out of Week One that that impressed you. Who who did you walk away with saying, okay, wow, I, I really like what I just saw there? Um. I picked Houston, but I I was very impressed with them. But I think we'll go with FSU. I mean, it might be a little like cliche, but they were down twenty to six. Uh, yeah, and then they they won forty five to thirty four. So they gave up a touchdown after that. Yeah, and they, they really. They, 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 it's it not like they're versing some scrub team. They're versing, they were versing the eleventh best team, even if you don't think they were or not. Mm-hmm. I mean, Ole Miss was rolling. Then the defense just woke up, and they they were um they had the what's it, the redshirt freshman was. Just going going off and Cook, he was having a good game. He wasn't having a great rush game at until that point. 
Mm-hmm. So like I think no, it was the, very impressive that just the red shirt just took over the game. I mean Dalvin Dalvin Cook you mentioned it wasn't his best running game, but he had hundred hundred yards receiving mm-hmm. with seven receptions. And DeAndre Francois looked really impressive. I mean mm-hmm. the the different it just looked like a completely different quarterback if you take how he closed that second quarter mm-hmm. and then in the second half it just looked like a completely so, yeah, when the completely pressure, different quarterback. When the pressure was on the most. He really came um to shine. I also have to mention, though, about FSU, I really enjoyed uh, Aguayo's younger brother, well, Ricky. He broke the record. Already. With <laughs> six for six from field goals, three for three on the extra points, ice in the veins. Kid kid was really milking it. I, I'm a big fan he of that. He broke the record I, I, in his first game ever. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming, because I, I, this is something that uh, we, we joke around about, is, is always like, oh, I'm going to make sure my kid's a, a kicker. Yeah. I, I'm going to get him... I feel like this, their dad was really like, nope, I'm going to make kickers. Because that kid's yeah. going to end up going in the first round at this rate <laughs> if his brother's going in the second. Yeah. Um, for me, Baylor kind of stood out. And it's not necessarily that they played a, a, a very good opponent or that I, I was just blown away with every single thing I saw mm-hmm. on the field. They won 55-7 to against Northwestern State. That's how yeah. that should look for your normal Baylor group. I was a bit nervous, though, about how this program would handle this crazy offseason, Art Bryles leaving. Yeah. Obviously, it, it just, I didn't know if they were going to really be able to just kind of calmly get over that. I didn't know if they were going to be able to maintain the success that they've had consistently. And they were able to. They looked as sharp as any Baylor team consistently does. And it was really encouraging to see Seth Russell go out there, mm-hmm. 14 of 20, four touchdowns, because he was coming back off an injury. When he was healthy yeah. last season, he was going to put himself in that Heisman race. He really wasn't. It looked like Baylor had a very good shot, actually, to be one of the college football teams, one of those yeah. four teams. And, and then Seth went down. So for them to look as strong as they did as a unit, and Seth to look great in that first game, I was very impressed with Baylor. I was actually a little surprised they didn't move up that much. In, in the rankings, but I understood it. But for me, mm-hmm. I, that's a team to really keep your eye on. I think the Big 12 this year is actually going to now be pretty exciting because Oklahoma seemed to be everybody's clear runaway favorites. They've yeah. already taken a loss. Texas with a huge win. They're, I mean, they're obviously yeah. now on a lot of people's radars. And then, of course, you have the TCU and Baylor who are going to be right there in the mix. So the Big 12 is going to be very, very exciting uh, moving forward. Yep. And I think, though, we, we probably both could agree week one's most impressive team was Alabama, 52-6 to six over USC. I, I didn't think USC was going to win the game. I, I, mean, I picked USC. Did you? I you this, went for it? I thought this wasn't Alabama's year to make the playoff. Turns out everybody who thought that was wrong, and it's really not your fault. I mean, there's a lot There's a lot of people who, who thought LSU. A lot. Of, some people really like Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, but Alabama comes out and demolishes Number twenty, USC, and they were on the road. I mean, they made an absolute joke out of that team. Honestly, it, the, the only reason I just not as impressed because after they scored a second touchdown, USC literally looked like they gave up. Well, that that's why I think it was really crazy for me because you you look at how the game was going. It was three mm-hmm. nothing after. They were looking the first good. quarter, <laughs> and it was like, wow, they're they're going to be able to maybe shut them out. And I think that's where a lot of people wondered, would how would Alabama be at the quarterback position? Mm-hmm. And now it's not going to be a question mark, but now it's going to be scary because Jalen Hurts, the true freshman, comes in, two touchdowns through the air and two on the ground, and now he's bringing a brand new look, one that we've really never seen mm-hmm. from Nick Saban, the most rushing touchdowns that a Nick Saban quarterback has ever had while at Alabama was Blake Sims for seven. The mm-hmm. next closest to that is about five, and Jalen Hurts is sitting second all-time, or third all-time, rather, with two. And he did that in one game. And you sh- and you saw the athleticism from this kid right away. He came in, yeah. the whole game was changed. Right away, everything was different. He scored that first touchdown, Alabama picked it up. They go into halftime with a 17-3 to lead. And they never let up. They extended all the way to 38-3. to They went on a 38-0 run. They only let up one field goal mm-hmm. through quarters 2, 3, and 4. So, to, to me, it was really impressive. But where I think this is now going to be very interesting is how good is Jalen Hurts? Because if he's going to be mm-hmm. a dual-threat quarterback that adds another dangerous weapon to Alabama, because that was kind of the one thing you didn't have to worry about Alabama for a while. They always had a really good outside receiver, mm-hmm. 
and a great run game. And the quarterback was good enough because also the defense on the other side of the ball was always top five in the nation. Yeah. Well, if they now add a dual-threat quarterback Mm -hmm. to the mix, Bama might just run away with the college football playoff this year with ease, unbeaten season, because if if week one is any indicator of how they're going to be looking. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I agree. I guess I know I didn't pick them to be in the playoff, really, but I really shouldn't be surprised because they – it's just because since Alabama for the past, what, eight years or whatever, they would just find ways to make – even like their minor situations work, and they just win. I, so I can't really be all that surprised that they're making something that like that they had nothing work. I think it's 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 similar to. I, I always like to find a way to somehow see if the Patriots won't win the AFC East, and I think that's kind of what people try to do. You with did Bama. it two years ago. I, yeah, I I or did last it. Year, really. I did I did it with the Dolphins. That obviously didn't work out. I was really like, <laughs> oh, I think the Bills are going to win it. I kind of went back on my ways there, and I was like, no, the Patriots got this. Let me not look ridiculous. <laughs> Um, but I think that's kind of what it is with Alabama. You're like, no, they, it has to go wrong. There has to be a, a team to take it from them. And then they go out there and they have a game like this to start the year. Mm-hmm. And you just kind of say, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. That's 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 pretty crazy. What I do want to ask, though, is because the SEC has been the most feared division in all of college football, the most praised division in all of college football yeah. for years. And... It's been well deserved, many of them. But to me, yeah. last year, I didn't think it was that impressive. Mm-hmm. And I think Alabama was playing teams at the perfect time consistently. They would play. They played LSU and Georgia and Ole Miss. They played all these teams. Well, they lost at, Ole Miss. They lost Ole Miss, but they played all these teams, and it was kind of at their peak. Mm-hmm. But in the game against Alabama was the beginning of their downfall. LSU was unbeaten when they went in to play Alabama last year, and I think LSU then ran off three consecutive losses. Okay. Georgia came in against Alabama. It was at Georgia. Georgia was the favorite. Okay. Nick Chubb is hurt. They get destroyed. Georgia ends up, I think, being unranked. Mm-hmm. Ole Miss beat Alabama, and I think they moved into the top four. I know they moved into the top four after that. They ended up losing a game to like Memphis, and mm-hmm. it just wasn't that good of a season for them. But they kept playing these teams when they were at such a high level where people were like, oh, Alabama's just stopping them all. But when you looked at how the teams played after that, I don't uh-huh. think that it's Alabama's killing everyone's spirit. I just think that they were the, the SEC wasn't that good last year. And I think this year, I think week one really did show that the SEC isn't this almighty untouchable empire the only reason i i i agree and disagree because they had a lot of good teams coming into this and they maybe they it's just week one little the jitters got to them because like lsu Ole miss tennessee they didn't look that good but and then they could come back with a vengeance this the rest of the season that's why i feel like it could be of course yeah i mean your, it's your, your um theory could be right it's week one a lot of, of people like, had a lot of praise more for Tennessee, LSU, and Bama than Ole Miss, but Ole Miss is still a good team, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, they still could come back and just run the table, all these teams. Well, I mean, and obviously and if Florida, that does Florida, happen, I don't think, is no joke either, too. Well, that's kind of the thing for me. It's that Florida has an unimpressive win over UMass. You saw how bad Tennessee looks against Appalachian State. And then LSU looking horrible mm-hmm. against Wisconsin and then you have Ole Miss blowing a 28 to 6 lead and those are really your top teams. The only team that's really left out of that top group is mm-hmm. Georgia, who did yes look I think very good against UNC and I mm-hmm. think Nick Chubb is someone who a lot of people are going to be excited about moving forward. But for me, mm-hmm. when you compare performances across the SEC, this is a year where Alabama should be running the table because a lot of for for the past couple of years, it does feel like Alabama always does have that one loss, and then they back bounce back stronger than ever. Yeah. But I think there are, are teams in position this season to go unbeaten, or even a, a teams that could possibly have a more difficult schedule than Alabama, where Alabama could be the SEC champions hypothetically. Mm-hmm. But if they do lose a game, I think they could actually miss the college football playoffs. And I think that's I more. Think so. I think that's more through my point of view. I don't know if they would ever let leave the SEC out, but if you have an unbeaten Baylor, an unbeaten Ohio State, an unbeaten Stanford, and then I think if you have a team like Notre Dame, who, in my opinion, for the rest of the way, has a more difficult schedule 
than Alabama with playing Miami, Michigan State, and, and a couple other t- good teams on there. I don't remember all of them off the top of my head. Um, I, I think it would be interesting to see how that would go. I don't think they could ever imagine leaving the SEC out. The thing is, like, say you just lose one game to a, like, a team that's good. They, don't you think they're still going to be... Don't you think it's still better than someone who's like Baylor who goes undefeated? I think if Baylor, though, does... It's almost like a case of last year. Don't you think they're still better than that undefeated team? Not that they... I don't know how they view it. Like, if you're undefeated, you, sh- you should go in. I'm just saying as a hy- hypothetical. Yeah, I think... Well, that's the other thing I left out. I want, that's what I was supposed to mention in an ACC school. If there's an unbeaten Clemson, if you have unbeaten well, I, I, champions I think, across the board, I think it's tough to still put Bama in there. And I think a lot of people, though, would make the argument that you make is a one-loss SEC champion is a lot more impressive than being an unbeaten Big 12 champion. And my, like, I was actually flirting with like the trying to predict the playoff. I was really wor- wanted to put I had Clemson at one. I really want to put FSU at four. Because I thought mm. those two teams could be in there, I, mm-hmm. but then I took it out, put Stanford. Cause I, okay. I don't know how if they could possibly put two ACC teams. It might Maybe happen it, though. I mean, it might if 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 the only loss that one of those they do teams, play each other too. If the only loss that one of those teams suffer is to the other one, mm-hmm. it could happen. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I think I think the SEC ultimately will get in. But I think this yeah. is one of the years where it looks to be even weaker, but Bama looks even better. So I just really mm-hmm. believe that, that Bama should be running the table, and if they do, I'm going to be kind of unimpressed. But, well, of course, again, only week one. So we will yeah. see. Um, I really did want to mention, though, because for for those who are really new around here, because we've been doing this show over on, on WICR for a while and, and things like that, and he's all about the U. He's all about Miami. And for for a little bit now, they, they, they they've been... Going through some rough times. It just hasn't been the traditional you. The the teams that made someone like Ant fall in love with the program. Mm-hmm. Well, week one, 70 to 3, thrashing. <laughs> They've got themselves now in the AP top 25. They are yeah. First number time 25. Since 2013 or 14? I, I yeah, mean, I think it's 13. 13, a, yeah. And there are, there are two things there that, that stand out to me. There's two things that make me think that this isn't just some type of fluke. Because I don't think anybody can look at 70-3 to three as a fluke. <laughs> Mark Rick coming over from Georgia and Brad Kaya, a first-round talent. They have him as second, as like for um, scouting for the NFL, they're the second-best quarterback. I guess he's behind Watson. Yeah, a lot of people like Watson. So he, he's, I think anywhere you look, you will find Brad Kaya as a top-three quarterback heading into next year's draft. So mm-hmm. you have that combination. To me, the, the U is a lot more than a... Flash in the pan, something that's going to be, it's just going to come and go. I, mm-hmm. I think that the this is a team now that I know they play Florida State, and that's now going to be a tough matchup for yeah. for Florida State to have to to go versus. It's and that's why I just think the ACC now is even more interesting. They were a team that that stood out. I was hoping that they would get themselves into the top twenty five, mm-hmm. and. They did, and I think it's deservedly so because I think this is going to be a dangerous team now. Um, they they could uh, the linebacking uh, core is a little thin, which worries me. Their uh, wide receivers, which Mark Rick pointed out, blocking very well, and which helped them get three hundred yard rushers, which is actually very interesting to me because they they were just running on them. But uh, five rushing touchdowns in that game, mm-hmm. and they, it's a good sign because they have a balanced attack with Kaya, who could throw the ball anywhere he wants, which could be lethal, and. He only threw 18 times, but he was 12 of 18, 135 yards for four touchdowns. And I think he only played the first half, if I'm not mistaken on that. So yeah, I think you're right. I can't, rem- I can't remember right now. I mean, because I think if, if they, I mean, he only threw like you said 18 times. He mm. could, if he would have unleashed mm-hmm. for, <laughs> you know, yeah. 50 throws, it, it's like a 10 touchdown day at the office. Um, so I, I'm really excited to watch the U mm-hmm. this year. Now, the last thing I want to get into on the college football podcast that we're doing over here on the Sports Kingdom, is this Heisman race. Mm -hmm. Coming into this year, it was the year that I remembered the most. So many candidates. There were so many people that were considered. You had Watson and McCaffrey, who were in the final three last year. Mm -hmm. And then you have Baker Mayfield, who a lot of people were excited about. And you have Leonard Fournette, Mm -hmm. who last year... Within through the first seven weeks of the college football season, looked like he was 
just going to be the absolute lock mm-hmm. of the century to win that award. And I think those four were the who everybody was really, really talking about and really, really excited about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a hundred percent understand why, as as you should be. But then you look at week one. Mm-hmm. You you of course throw Dalvin Cook in because of just how good Dalvin Cook is, right? You you maybe look at this Bama quarterback, Jalen Hurts, the true freshman. Maybe he's going to have to now get some consideration. And I think you then take a look, though, at three guys who really jump out at you. Mm-hmm. Deshaun Kaiser, JT Barrett, Nick Chubb. Guys who we're familiar with, but maybe were a bit forgotten in this so imp- such impressive group of just pure talents in college football this year. Mm-hmm. If, if you just quickly... Take a look at what they did. Deshaun Kaiser, six total touchdowns, like you mentioned, five in the air, one on the ground. Had he played that whole game against Texas, I think Notre Dame does walk away with a victory. Obviously, Coach Kelly decided that he wanted a quarterback battle to not stop after camp. He wanted to do it while up against yeah. Texas, which was a, a really bad decision. I think ultimately cost them the game. JT Barrett, first drive, throws an interception. Uh-oh, this could be bad. Never mind. I'll throw seven. I'll have seven total touchdowns on the day. I think it was five in the air, two on the ground. And then Nick Chubb against UNC, another ranked team, goes yeah. for 222 yards, two touchdowns, and looked awesome. Yeah, he did. And I, I just think that this Heisman race is going to be probably the, the best one we've ever seen. Uh, it's possible. I mean, it's only week one. There are definitely a lot of candidates, and you could put in uh, even Greg Ward from Houston, mm-hmm. Dalvin Cook. You can't forget about him. Uh, who else we have here? Kai is probably going to have his name in there, I would think. Uh, La- also, Lamar Jackson from Louisville. Yep. Um, what's his name? Francois. Francois, Francois too, yeah. from Florida State. I mean, I mean you, and Baker Mayfield actually still had a really good game. Not, and, 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 and he, I know he lost, but he still had a great game. And everybody still is is high on him. A lot of people felt like he was left out last year, Mm -hmm. wrongfully so. So he's going to get tons and tons and tons of praise. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you on the spot, Ant. I'm going to put myself on the spot because I just thought of doing this right now. Okay? Okay. Prediction. Mm -hmm. Who who do you guarantee is final three in in the Heisman? Who's going to be there? Not You don't even have to guarantee they're going to win. Just who are you guaranteeing will be there in the running as one of the final three candidates for this Heisman Trophy? All right, then, Chubb. You guarantee Chubb is there? Yeah. Wow. Why not? I like it. <laughs> See, this is the thing, um, for, for again, for those who, who are newer around here, um, Ant was so high on Todd Gurley. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of told him, I was like, oh, I'm not sure. I, I mean, yeah, he can be good, but I don't know how good he is. Obviously, we all know how good Todd Gurley is now. He's been terrific. So I, I, I tend to <laughs> listen when, when Ant tells me a running back is going to be very good. Now, I'm not going to act like I don't think Leonard Fournette is better than him, but I definitely do think that Nick Chubb Mm -hmm. could be good. The one guy that I'm going to go and say will end up there in the final three is JT Barrett. I was going to say him next. (laughs) I I, I really think that he is going to at least be there because I think that Ohio State has a very good chance to come out and win the Big Ten. I don't know if I'm 100% picking them to win the Big Ten because I also really do like Michigan, and to me it's going to be between those two teams. Yeah, definitely. But if Ohio State takes the Big Ten, then I think it, it, JT Barrett is going to be mm-hmm. is going to be right there. I, th- I think his his total touchdowns at, at season's end is going to be terrific. And he, he is a player that when after you saw what he did week one, I cannot wait to see what those final stats look like when the – the season is fully over. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that is the first episode for college football this year. We're probably going to skip doing one on week two. There's just not that many good games. We may do a, a, a bigger show where we cover a large variety of sports topics and we'll throw in pickums for week three because I do want to get some pickums out there for that. But yeah, that is the show. I want you guys to hit up on the comments. Who is your one guarantee is final three in Heisman voting? Let me know who you have. Drop a like. Make sure you subscribe. And if you want to keep the conversation going outside of the comments, you can come over, find me on Twitter at the Kevin Walsh, and we'll keep this conversation going. I will see you guys next time on the Sports Kingdom.